So a lot has happened since my little hiatus. We could talk about it later at the final of this video during my Let's Talk segment. But let's not waste any more time. I'm going to dissect the series of information that came out in regards to Ruby Frankie and her arrest, etc., etc. Pretty much the stuff that we all wanted to know. And I'm going to conclude this small little series through a bunch of videos with the husband's and interrogation slash interaction, especially after finding out that her kids were being tortured. I've always said that the husband is complicit. I've always said that I think the husband should be arrested as well, right? But that's from a different video. Now, um, before we get started, of course, press like, subscribe if you haven't done so. If you are new here, I'm Alistair Hanzekio. This is just my point of view. And if you wanted to do more, you have options in the description below. Let's go and get started. Oh, I got that order wrong. It's been a while. Uh huh. About that What's that? Downstairs in the interview room. So I could have gone that way, but I appreciate opening the door. Look at these guys right here. The basement. This next one, right, right here. Right here. And we'll go ahead and make everyone just press for right here. Go to the other room. This way, yeah. Okay, there's a few things here that really caught my attention. Number one is the fact that, um, oh my god, they, what, they go in the basement? So that's where you go for the interrogation? I've never been arrested. Yes? Sorry. Sorry to disappoint you. Mm -hmm. So I, <laughs> you go in the basement. Ooh, so you really cannot escape. It's like in indicative as to you are under arrest. That's really funny. Second thing I've noticed is how white the walls are. Wow, it's very scrub clean over there. Mm. People are, yeah, I guess, yeah, tax dollars, right? The third thing I've noticed, how empty it is. What was that, on the weekend? Look. <laughs> Okay, and the fourth thing I've noticed is how, you know how you walk into the room, you can see that camera r really facing you. I've always wondered, like, why do people act as if there's no cameras, those idiotic criminals? No, you can see right there. I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. You can see. You can see it. Um, and how, um, how penitent pen penitentiary it just felt. Anyway, that's the funny part. Now, the serious part, really, um, in terms of her body behavior, is that she is unfazed, uh, completely unfazed, uh, almost defiant, almost as if like you got the wrong, you got the wrong B. I'm gonna get you. You don't even know what you're doing. Do you know who I is? That's the vibe I'm getting from that. There's no humbleness. There's no. Um, uh, she understands the severity of the situation, but this, there's this uh, again. Like I believe she's an alleged narcissist. So there's this feeling of like I'm gonna get out of this anyway. Besides, I'm Jody Hildebrand. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I, um, I'm um, <laughs> Ruby Frankie. I'm the soothsayer of religion. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? But as a simple side note. If you ever get arrested, you you want to act like her. Listen, I've never been arrested, but if you ever arrest me, you're under arrest. Oh, am I? Click, click, click. Just be quiet. Be quiet. Just float. Float. No, no. Float. Don't twitch. Don't <coughs> do nothing. Oh, when you lay down? All right. Just do nothing. Just do nothing. That's 
pro- like if anybody want a class on how to behave, if you ever get arrested, this is it. Just shut the f up, take your handcuffs, and just walk upright. <laughs> work on your core, you know, like squeeze your stomach. Maybe work on your posture a little bit. You know what I'm saying? And just walk into the room and wait for your lawyer, and then you can you can talk tough. But no, 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 no. Hmm, feels kind of good to be back a little bit. Listen, you have no idea what happened. You have no idea what the hell happened. It's okay, I'll tell you. The last talk, so stick around. Yeah. Anyway, next segment. <laughs> Is this your water? I'm gonna... It's yours if you want it. We'll save that a couple of We also have snacks if you need anything to eat. So, I know I introduced myself to you earlier, but my name is Detective Bates, and this is Sergeant Tobler. We're just here to talk to you about kind of a few things involving your kids. So, first, are you... Do you live down here, or...? <laughs> yes, bitch. Yes. <laughs> I can't. Do you want to talk to me about where you live or nope. how many kids you have? Nope. I can't. I can't. Girl. <laughs> so we just spoke with your husband and oh. he said you guys have six kids. Are those all together? Are those all your kids? all day okay so it's up to you if you want to talk to us about what's going on love it would you feel more comfortable talking to one of us <clears throat> or if you feel more comfortable talking to him I can step out I'll wait till I have a lawyer okay, okay. So, so let me tell you something right now because then you know at the beginning i'm putting the editing you might be like oh she's so frazzled she's afraid she's just in the she's just scared no i mean no no um no she's not she's not scared she she in her head she's like i'm not talking to any of you until i have my lawyer yeah so don't be fooled by this this appearance of you know damsel in distress her brain is working and that is, to be quite honest, that's the that's the perfect best solution. PSA: If you ever get caught by the police, you act like her. <laughs> you just be quiet until you get a lawyer to arrive, and then you can talk your mess. But until then, shut the f up. Don't even play these games. Shut the f up. Shut up. Don't talk about your weather. Don't talk about your mama, your kids. Don't shut up. Just sit down and be like lawyer, 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 lawyer. That's all you do. That's all you do until you get someone because you don't know everything you say. You see how she's being recorded? Could be used in court. Yeah. And she has a little smirk on her face. She's like, mm hmm, talk to new lawyer. But I was laughing because that's exactly how I would act. You ever arrest me? I'm not talking to you. Nope. Waiting for my attorney. And then I collapse. Oh, thank you. Oh, my God. I got arrested. <laughs> help me, help me! Yeah, until then I'm like mm. <laughs> Look, uh, if you're new here, I know you're confused. You're like, what am I watching? Listen, there's a there's a operating flow to this thing. There's a reason why this segment is there at this particular time. No, I know I look disorganized. I am organized as hell. Sleep deprived, but organized <laughs> organized. <laughs> Anyway, so, uh, what was that? I have no idea what that was. Um, <clears throat> let's continue. So, you did not talk to us at all? Have <laughs> Do you want to answer that? There you go. You don't want to talk to us about anything? Let's fall asleep. So, yeah, this, this is just your chance to tell us we're just trying to get your side of the story. 
Um, so it's your chance to do that. But it's up to you. We're just going to talk. <laughs> and I mean, I'm not asking any criminal questions. If you don't want to talk to us, just let us know and we'll, she, we'll, we'll be done. She told you. I want a lawyer, officer. I've already told you. Okay! <laughs> uh, you want a lawyer? Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Oh my lord. They pretend like they didn't hear it. Please, it's a strategy they use. Listen, 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 listen. No. So clearly this is someone who's educated. I'm not saying people who talk are not educated, but this is someone who has some sort of inclination understanding, really. Um mm -mm. you need a lawyer, but I'll, I'll tell you something else um, before I move on to the next lunatic. I'll tell you something else. Why? Uh, mm -hmm. She's a she's a multimillionaire. When you get when you get to a certain level of, of income in economics, you know very damn well situations like you get briefed, you get briefed like behind the scenes or whatever. You get briefed, you get briefed depending on uh, your, your your economics and stuff. Yeah, she has lawyers, and they tell her they're like, if at any point in time. This happens to you? Mm -hmm. Here's the quick number. And shut the F up. All right? Just get the phone call. Call me. Don't call your mom and whatever. I'm the first call. Listen, <laughs> I know people. <laughs> and I ask a lot of questions. I'm telling you. It's not even for debate. I'm telling you this is what occurs. So she's a multimillionaire. So she's at a certain level of economics where she knows very damn well. Be quiet. At least she's listened because, you know, People over there have egos too, but at least you pay attention. Let's move on to the next lunatic. Mm -hmm. Can I get you any water, snacks? You doing all right? Can be expected. How long have you lived here in Islands? Mm -hmm. Six years. Six years? The same house? Wow. You married? Single? Where'd you move from? He's in county. county. And how long were you up there for? I'm a little nervous. <laughs> You're that. You know, to be honest with you, if I was sitting over there, I'd be a little nervous too. So don't don't worry about it. We're just here to talk, to get your side. And right now, we're just asking you just two cool questions. My county lived here, that kind of thing. I watched so. too many detective movies. <laughs> how are you? Which one's your favorite? <laughs> Me too. You can't, honestly, I, I sit there and I'm married and I sit there and watch a little bit with my wife and I say, that, like, we don't, that's not how we do it. Hey, that's not right. So don't take, there's some good ones out there, don't get me wrong. But most of them are, are probably a little off base. We're not as mean. I won't get up and beat you up. We don't do that. We just want to get to know you a little. So if you just kind of want to share a little about yourself and what brought you down here and. So I trust my attorney. He said, don't say anything. And I said, I have nothing to hide. And he's like, I know that. But just let me be there with you when we talk. So uh, uh, you guys seem nice people. Yeah. I'm not trying to hide anything. I'm trying to be difficult. This is really, if you knew all the pieces, I think you'd have a lot of empathy for well, what's going on. That's and really what we're looking for. That's what we're looking for. And you're an adult. and. The thing about our interview, if we ask you any questions that you don't want to answer, you can just tell us, I don't want to answer that question. But we do want to have a basis and an understanding of what's going on in that home or what went on up north that brought them into your home. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to share any of that and you don't want to answer any other questions, that's okay. I'd, I'd like to just tell you. But I don't, I don't know who you are. I don't know if you're going to flip my words. I, I don't know. And that's the good thing about cameras. Everything, it's pretty much double recorded, audio, video. And it's for the safety of for you and for us because we don't want to flip your words. And this will all be pretty much right there to support you. So we're not going to use anything against you. be so insistent then. He's an honest, good man. Goes to church. I trust him. Why would he say that to me then? I don't know. I don't, I don't know your attorney. Be I'm telling you, at, at, at a certain level of economics, you're, you move with, you don't move without lawyers or accountants. So Jody over there, let me tell you why she's entertaining these officers. I'm going to give you a little insight here, okay? 
seriousness. The officers are trained to pretend like they're your friend. What Jodie there is trying to do is she's trying to gaslight the officer. So you have two individuals, one person who's narcissistically trying to use their powers, allegedly, to be like, oh, I'm Jody. I'm nice. Don't you like me? Don't you want me? Oh my God, I'm so great. Then you have the officers who are trained people to establish a rapport. Look, he brought up the fact that, yeah, my wife and whatever. Yeah, don't be scared. I'm not, look, I'm not going to, I'm not going to pummel you. I'm just going to be a nice guy. I'm just trying to find out about you. And then you have the partner who's like, <laughs> yeah, oh my God, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we just want to figure it out what's going on with you. You know, don't worry about it. Yeah. It's all just to make you comfortable, uh, citizen. It's called establishing a rapport. Then you're like, oh, well, I guess it's not so bad. Oh, yeah, I guess it's not so bad. Of course. <laughs> Working. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so to go back to my thought, is that <laughs> Jody loves to talk. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> she loves to talk. And part of establishing a rapport is to allow the other person to speak. You want to be friends with someone? You make them speak. Hi, how are you? What's your name? Where are you from? What do you do? Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Tell me more. <laughs> I told you I know I look disorganized. I'm not. And... <clears throat> Um, that's like a lure, a lure to narcissistic people because they see that as an opportunity to gaslight you. So they will take it. That's why she can't stop yapping. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but I don't, I want to talk, but I don't know you. I, I want to talk, but I don't know you because she's trying to create this narrative to the officers that, you know, um, I have nothing to hide. I really have nothing to hide. And I'm really going to tell you the truth. But my lawyer told me to tell the truth. She has no intention of speaking, but she's creating this spin to just for no reason, and I'm telling you, they can't help it because these officers, it's beyond it's beyond their pay grade to even influence anything. Like what's gonna happen is gonna happen, lady. So you influencing them doesn't change the outcome. Do you understand? And that's why the law is extremely and particularly efficient with narcissistic monsters because whoever you see in front of you is not in control. That doesn't have control of your fate, and that's why they fail every time because they're trying to enchant someone or something that doesn't. You're trying to enchant someone or something that has no effect or effect into the situation, and that's why it fails. I haven't seen this, and honestly, I haven't seen this. I'm watching this for the first time, but I'm going to suspect she's going to toll around. She's going to go like, doo -doo, I want to tell you, but I don't. I want to tell you, but I might want. Until the end. We'll see. And then she'll say nothing. <laughs> Be honest. Well, I'm just well, saying he's, he's, a, he's, he's a good, good honest man. man. Yeah, and know. I'm an honest person as well, so we get along great. And he just said, do not say anything. Maybe just as an attorney, they just... They always say that. They always want to be with their clients. I'm not sure. But like I said, at any time, if you don't want to answer a question, you don't have to. So the ball's really in your court on what you do want to answer and what you don't. So... Well, I think it, it looks bad that I don't want to answer anything, but it's not because I'm trying to be difficult. I'm really hanging on what he told me to do. Mm -hmm. You see? The image problem. <laughs> Honestly, from watching this interview, really made me understand the power dynamics between Jody and, and, and uh, Ruby. Jody is the puppet master. Ruby is just an idiot who believed her own juice and believed all the, my, 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 you're so great. Ruby is actually not that smart. Jody <sighs> is emotionally intelligent. And she found out that Ruby is emotionally an idiot. And so she gaslighted Ruby and Ruby fell for it. Because listen, what she's just uh, watching right now about Jody, she's spinning in circles because she wants to, she wants to make sure it's particularly image is not taken out of her context, which is I'm not, because she plans on not telling you, right? She's like, I'm not going to say anything, but I just want to make sure that they don't think I'm not saying anything because I have something to hide. Look, look, look how much somersaults, look how much twisting she's doing to prove this stupid point. Because it doesn't matter. 
Ruby didn't give a crap. Ruby was like, my lawyer told me, I'm going to keep quiet. You can believe what you really want. No. See, there's a level of security that Ruby had. But Jody, extremely insecure, is even insecure to the point that, what are they going to think about me? How are they going to perceive me based on what I say or don't say? Oh, no, I have to make sure that this image is correct. <laughs> Honey, at this level, at this level of arrest, who cares what you're saying about me? I'm telling you, it's me and my lawyer. Oh my God, thank God you're back. I don't know what happened. They arrested me. Help me. Now, until then, <laughs> Mr. Ezekiel, <coughs> Mr. Ezekiel, <coughs> would you want to talk? Do you have some coffee, please? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we'll give you coffee. Thank you. Would you want to talk? Is my lawyer here yet? Oh, oh okay. Mm -hmm. Because once you tell you don't want to talk, they'll dismiss you in a heartbeat and they won't give you the coffee. So you ask for the coffee, ask for the water, ask for the snack, and you wait. Because it could be there, it could be there all day, literally. Yeah. Yeah. Ask for a few snacks. I have a little, you know, tray table before you tell them, I want my lawyer. <laughs> all right, let's continue. Yeah, who's your attorney? Adam. 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 Father's an attorney. His brother's an is attorney. He, is he local? Yeah. Is it local? I don't know. Um, the street where the town hall is. This part right here, <clears throat> the fact that she doesn't know the, her attorney's last name tells me two things. It's an attorney appointed to her the same day. So that means when, when in a time of crisis, she called the church and the church told the attorney to call her. So she doesn't know the attorney. This is not her attorney on the regular. So she's an idiot for being a wealthy person, not having att attorneys on her team. You're an idiot. When you have a certain level of money, you need an attorney and you need an accountant pretending like you would do this about yourself. Are you out of your mind? Nobody can do this by themselves. So this woman, that's not her attorney. So she went <laughs> attorney.com, dot, 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 1-800-attorney.com, what an idiot. So, all right. So she went with the attorney of the church gave her, right? It could give you, listen, sometimes you have to listen to the words that are not being said. <laughs> and you can get a very good educated guess as to what's going on behind the scenes in, in people's mind. So she was in distress. She called her church and her church called their attorney. That's why she doesn't know the attorney's last name. You, you know your attorney last name because you deal with them on the regular. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know his last name. If anything, I will give you the first name, last name, and phone number and address. Because, yeah, please, go get my attorney. Why is he late? Get him now. Go call him. Yeah, this is not a time when you're like, I don't want to give him his last name, honey. <laughs> she doesn't know this game. No. Yeah. Okay. Oh, the same name. The whole reason we're sitting here today is we just... We, there's a lot of questions we have that we just maybe have misunderstandings that we just mm -hmm. need to clarify. And I know, and I'd love to tell you if you were here because I don't know, I, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen with what I say. You know, I, I watched. I'm a psychologist. I've watched people flip things all the time, <laughs> so I get it. I, I, I sit on your side. I get it. I wish people didn't do that. But they do. Well, if you're not willing to answer any of the questions about yourself, would you be willing to answer any questions maybe about Ruby or Kevin that you could help us understand? We just honestly want to understand what, what their dynamic is, what happened to the children, what caused their separation. Right. And after talking to Kevin, it sounds like you know a lot about their dynamic mm -hmm. and their relationship. So if you could help us understand that at the least, that would be awesome. And that's nothing incriminating towards yourself because it's not pertaining to you. So if you could help us understand that. Jody, we're, we're going to do this. You asked for your attorney, we'll, we'll leave it with that. We'd like to maybe talk to you later when you have your attorney here present. Absolutely. And, and we'll go back to the appointment at 4 she, on you Friday. Made, an appointment here with that here before he talked to the to the officer okay. and said can we make a time and he said out loud do not talk to them 
Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I'll, I'll talk and see if we can schedule that, and maybe that's just something we we just do with your team. Okay. Do you have any questions for us or anything we answer in the meantime? No. Okay. No. I knew it. All of this yappy yapping circus circus just to say nothing. Yeah, I could have told you that. <laughs> All right. How much time do I have? Do I have time to do one more? Yes. I may have a little bit of time to talk about the husband. Time, you're wondering? Because I'm working right now. <laughs> I'm working. And I have to, you know what? I don't have time because I have to factor in the less talk. So... Oh, look at me talking out loud. I'm not going to edit this out. Too much work. Let's look at parts of Ruby Frankie's husband being questioned by the cops because I'm curious. I haven't seen that. I know of it, but I haven't seen it. I think there are some of our teenagers to adults. So are they all living with you or? No, I haven't seen them for over a year. Any of them? No, none of them. For a year? Over a year. Okay. I've been in a separation. From who? From my wife and family. What's your wife's name? Ruby. Ruby? When was the last time you saw Ruby? The last time I saw her yeah. was um, the 18th of, of this month. We met to, she requested me to sign over vehicles or the titles to the vehicles, the vehicle that she drives that were all in my name. When's the last time you physically saw Russell or Eve? Um, the day that I moved out, July 24th, 2022. 24th of 2022? Or July 25th, July 25th. So it's my understanding that, that at least home here in, in Kanta and Ivan's, have you been to that home? No. You've not been to that home? Uh, no, I don't know. Do I don't know, know what's anything that's been going on. Like, this is good, man. Like, I would love to be able to help you out with this, and like, I'm seeing the light of being in that home, because I'm unaware of your involvement in, in what's really going on. So. For you to say that you're unaware of the status of your kids kind of makes, I know that sounds kind of crummy to you, but it sounds kind of good to me. Like, who lives in that home with your, is it ex-wife? Is it okay. currently a separated wife? Like, who lives in that home with your children? To be honest, I don't know. I, I know that she's there with um, four of the children and our two older children have moved out. They're, they're not at your home in Springville? Uh, and I'm not trying to trip you up. I can see you're hesitant to talk to me. I understand that. Well, where where I live? No, yeah. I haven't seen them for over a year. Okay. That's tough. I can only imagine how that feels, man. I got kids. And not seen for that long, that would, that would tear a piece of my heart out. Of age to drive. Does she drive? I don't know. Okay. Like I said, I don't. I know nothing that's going on in so, their lives or anything going on. How did you find out that you needed to come here to 55 North Main Street? I received a message that I needed to come pick up my kids from the police department in Highlands. And who was that message from? Uh, well, I prefer not to say right now. It would just help us a lot. I'll try to figure out who reached out to you because it makes sense that that would happen. I'm just not aware of anyone who did that from our department. Right. And, and I'm not comfortable saying right now who reached out to me. Okay. Okay. Listen, <clears throat> this deadbeat dad, listen to me. You can throw tomatoes at me all you want. I say whatever I want. Listen to me very closely because as a father myself, you must be at your mind if you think you're going to 
what, prevent me from seeing my kid for a year? You must be crazy. Clearly, you have to be crazy. And I'm just going to sit there and take it and be like, all right, I'm not seeing my kid for a year. No problem. Sure. Why not? Mm hmm. One year. Fine. You don't love me. You don't like me. You don't want to be with me. You don't have sex with me. That's fine. That's fine. I can find another. But my children, I have your mind. You must be crazy. So the fact that he's sitting here trying to normalize this that, yeah, I just haven't seen my kid for a year. I have no idea who's in the house. Uh, you must be. You must be out your mind <laughs> on the nice little head. What? What? No, but think about that a little bit. And then and then they ask him, okay, well, you got a message from someone? Who sent you the message? I'm not telling you. I'm not telling you. Let's just assume he's innocent. Let's just assume he had no idea what the hell's going on. My kid starved to death? <laughs> How are you not raging? How are you just sitting there like a puddle of noodles? Like, uh, I don't know. I don't want to tell you right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, how? How are you not destroying the earth <laughs> and zapping lightning out of your fingers? <laughs> how are you not turning into, like, Dracula? How, how are heads not rolling? I don't understand. And then you're like, I don't know who she, I don't know who my kid live with. Now look, mind you, I'm not saying I'm not saying it doesn't happen to boys, but you know, if you have girls, you're not doing sleepover. Who are you, who are you sleeping over? Who are you sleeping over with? Who's over there with you? Huh? Okay, where's Henry? Okay, Jeffrey. Who are they? And even if they were all girls, there's a father in the house. Okay, no, you're out of your mind. There's no sleepovers. There is no sleepovers at all. I'm not saying how this happened to boys. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. I'm telling you. I'm, I'm telling you. I'm telling you a little bit like this on in the head of a, of a father. You must be at your mind. I'm thinking, like, what? Where are you going? I don't know who's in the house. And who texted you? I'm not telling you. Really? We know. We all know who texted him. Hey, um, what's, his, what's your name? Uh, Ruby. Ruby texted him. Oh, my God. I can't pick up the kids. They arrested me. Oh, crap. They did. Yeah. It looks like the ritual didn't work out, allegedly. <laughs> I'm running out of time now. All right, let's press play. So, you haven't seen any of the kids in over a year, you said? That's correct. And then, well, the last time you saw her? Mm -hmm. How old is she now? 15. She's 16? Okay. And then, when all the kids left, Ruby took all of them? Um, yeah, she stayed in the house and I moved up. Okay. And did you ever try to reach out to the kids, drop by the home, or no. was there? I honored the no separation boundary that we agreed to. So, what there was no your separation? Contact boundary, excuse me. Did you have a no contact order in place? No order? No, this was between my wife and mine. Yeah. So, what did Ruby ask of you when you separated? What did she ask of me? Did she ask you not to contact the kids? Ruby. He invited me to leave the home mm -hmm. while I um, thought about the, the choices that I've made in my life and the way that I've treated her. Okay. And so I left. And how long had you and Ruby been married before? We were married in 2000. So about 22 years? Uh, when we separated, we were going on 22 years. Yes. Okay. And during your marriage, how was how was disciplining your kids? How would you discipline your kids? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to answer that question. Okay, that's fine. No. Have, have you been since separated or since they lived here in the city of Ivins? Um, have you communicated with your wife regarding like discipline with your kids or their care or their physical well-being? No. So is she doing this on her own and just telling you how your kids are? She's not telling me anything about the kids. Who's this, who's this uh, female? All right. I'm running out of time. So his interview are going to be for the next video update. But listen, let me just give you a final thought in regards to this man. Oh, wait, actually, no. <laughs> let me tell you about this man. Look. A few things that he he said, and as a nosy detective person as I am, 
You remember how they ask, she asked, um, you know, that he moved out of the house? And then the, the officer was, that, that, um, I'm sorry, that he packed his stuff and left the house. So the officer was like, all right, so did Jody make ask you to do that? And he stopped and paused for a second. He blinked a few times. Blinking is, is a, um, anyway, he blinked a few times and he said, no, Jody invited me to move out and pack my stuff in lieu of reflection of the stuff that I've been doing to her or how I've been treating her. Please, he's speaking the choice of words because he's protecting his wife. Now you might say to yourself, well, he's protecting his wife, Alistair. What's wrong with that? It's the context. This is why I say he's an accomplice. He knew exactly what was going on in the house. And if he didn't know, if he didn't know, if he didn't know, if he did not know, um, his behavior would have been the way we are right now. Yes, I know you could be shocked, but for God darn sake, one year and your, ch your children are emaciated. I get to the video of the kid. You could tell the kid is being literally being starved to death, right? You are not raging. Not everybody, look, not everybody, not everybody can be a good parent. And good parenting, let me tell you something, being a good parent is, um, is relative, right? Because who are you to tell me that I'm doing a bad job? You don't know me, <laughs> right? But there's certain things that are like universal, like, um, I don't know, is your kid not eating? Well, yeah, bad parenting. <laughs> is your kid, like, I don't know, never went to the dentist? Yeah, kind of bad parenting. Is your kid not, I don't know, there's certain things that you're like, yeah, bad parent. But overall, everybody does the best they can with the little sleep that they have. Um, yeah, let's go to my final thought. Mm -hmm. So, listen, as a final thought, let me tell you something. The order of this operating floor was very simple. I picked, <laughs> I curated, oh, I curated the order because I wanted to really see the difference. And I wanted to know for myself, really, who seduce who here? Who seduce who? Because even in the Ruby, in the Ruby case, when she was being interrogated, she was scared. There was definitely like a, <laughs> but she had enough wits about her to shut the F up, to shut the F up and listen to, and listen to her lawyer's advice. Now, when it comes to Jody, she spent way too much time trying to convince people who didn't matter um, to the fact that she's not a liar. Really, this is the wrong place, wrong time. But she was so concerned with her image that even at the wrong place, wrong time, that's the first thing in her mind. I'm not a liar. I'm an honest person. I'm not a liar. I want to tell you the truth, but I don't want to tell you the truth. I want to tell you the truth. I don't want to tell you the truth. I want to tell you the truth. I don't want to tell you the truth. I want to tell you the truth. I want to tell you like it's just ridiculous, ridiculous. One place, one time. Like, honey, don't you, aren't you tired from just crying and being emotionally stressed? I'd be too exhausted to even try to entertain you. I'd just be like, what do you want? Give me my coffee, my snacks, and my lunch. Get out of here. I want to speak to a lawyer. But no, in her, it was matter of life and death. That's how, how insecure she was. The fact that she wanted her image to be a particular way. It was so significant to me, and I was like, no, 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 no. She's the ringleader. And the idiots are Ruby and her husband. But they're only idiots because of religious psychosis. And let me tell you what that how dangerous that is. You know, religious psychosis is when your perception of reality is distorted because of, you know, of religion. This whole fiasco and the fact that these kids almost died is because of religious psychosis. They had an idea based on the divine that this is how it should be. Now, she convinced her husband to do the same? Sure, I'm gonna call them all stupid. And I'll tell you why I'm gonna call them all stupid. Usually, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't usually do that um, because everybody comes from their own background and stuff. But in this particular case, I'm gonna call them idiots. Do you wanna know why? Six kids are involved. Six kids, six kids. Now look, not everybody can do their best to provide for their children and six kids is a lot but these are multi these are people with a lot of money so you don't have to worry about feeding them housing them and giving them school and all that stuff right but there's so much to lose there's so much to lose it's almost like how dare you in my mind yeah maybe you can call me close-minded and it, it, there were so many times in the in 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 in, in the timeline between the start to the end that they could have been like, okay, all right, you know, it's, it's my children. No. 
Safi Shazelle. And at the last part, with uh, Kevin, you see, he's he's coming to the aid of his of his wife, and there's something to that. Again, not everybody may agree, but let me explain why that go that that really went wrong. In a relationship, <laughs> look at me giving advice. Yeah, why not? In a relationship, especially when you have children, you might think to yourself, your kids come first. Oh, what? Think to yourself, kids come first. Oof, well, I'm going to shatter your bubble. Your kids don't come first. Do you know who comes first? You come first. Because <laughs> if you're not okay, nobody can be okay. Yeah, believe it or not. I'm not telling you don't feed your kid, don't starve them, right? I mean, there's some certain necessities, but in terms of like who comes first in terms of being taken care of, you know, outside of just the necessities, it's you. The second person is your spouse or partner. Because if you and your spouse are not happy and together on the same page, the kids also will suffer. And a very close, close second slash third is your children. Because kids cannot benefit of a dysfunction. Kids do not benefit of, you know, a parent that's mentally just, oh my God, like not there. And society and life, of course, is not conducive to this, to this, you know, whatever I'm telling you, to the scenario. But I'm telling, I'm trying to tell you, like, that's the thrive of order of priorities. Because you can't be there for your spouse if you're not okay. You can't be there for your kids if your spouse and you are not okay. Like, it's, it's a, it's a chain reaction. Trust me. Try it. It really does make a difference. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway. The editing will be very minimal. You'll get what you get. If you don't like it, well, <laughs> I'm sorry. But press like, subscribe, and let's go to my let's talk. <laughs>
really was that my daughter almost died and and it, it would have been the case of Sid because there was nothing medically wrong with her and she only survived because Christopher went to bed late because I was already in sleep darling I was in bed sleeping I was gone because my days are scheduled and so I go to bed at a certain time 10 p.m. I'm out by 10 p.m. I'm out <laughs> I'm out sleeping right and uh, but Christopher was up. He was playing video games. And he was up till like maybe midnight, 1 a.m. And he saved her. Okay, let me tell you that story. So I don't know if you remember about a month and a half ago. It's been a while now. It's been a month. Whatever. Whatever. You could time the day from the last video I posted till now. And around that time, the weather was getting really, really hot, really warm. Like spring is great. It's, listen. And so... And then all of a sudden, at least here in my state, it dropped, it went from like 80 degrees outside to like like 30, like the forecast, to like 34 on that, that same night. So 80 in the morning and 34 at night. It was a sudden drop. Now, you might say to yourself, oh, whatever, you know, you're home, you have a temperature control situation, who cares, right? Which is, yeah, who cares? But actually, the sudden drop in temperature and the rapid summer drop in temperature is what almost killed her. And so let me explain to you what happened. Well, let me tell you why. So she was born prematurely. And you don't have to ask a lot of questions because it didn't make sense to me. Because I never heard these terms. And I'm, I work in a medical field. Get out of here. So I, this is the first time I even I even know about this. But when you're born prematurely, right, the lungs are the last one to de the last one to develop, right? But, you know, they look to check the kid to see if the baby is okay and healthy and it's okay and healthy. So they'd send you home. If, it, if it's within certain parameters, they go, okay, go home. You're fine. Your kid is healthy, right? But I found out from this incident is that from the age of birth to three years old, they never really know what systems in your body that's really lagging behind until they are put under severe stressors. And then they know, oh, okay, so the lungs have an issue. Because you can have the right numbers and right parameters and they deem you fine, but you never really know until it has a problem. And so in my daughter's case, her lungs were too small for to, to handle this particular thing that happened. So now what happened? In the, the house is temperature controlled, right? But the issue is not the temperature control. The issue here is the rate of drop, how fast it goes from one degree to the next. You know when you jump in the water, when you go from a from you know warm temperature environment and jump in a pool that's cold, you lose your breath, right? Like you, you lose your breath. It's the same feeling. It's a sudden drop of temperature that happens and then you lose your breath. In our bodies, our, our brain uh, produces steroids and the steroids stimulates the lungs to pick up, up, to pick up again. So when you come back for air, <gasps> you breathe. You think it's just all your lungs by itself, but no, there's a whole mechanism that happens. Your brain secretes st steroids and your lungs pick those up. But my daughter's lungs were too small to pick up the steroid pr produced by her brain. So... As she was sleeping in her room, the temperature dropped. You know, the air conditioning kicks in, but you know, none of that is instant. But the temperature was faster than, than, than it was a sudden drop. And she lost the air in her lungs. And then she stopped breathing. Her lungs couldn't pick, up, pick, back, pick back up again. Now, we don't sleep in the same bedroom. I'm not, uh, no. I mean, she has her own room. Get out of here. <laughs> she has her own room. I'm in the master bedroom. No. I'm in a room sleeping and Christopher is, you know, doing what Christopher does. I don't know, I'm sleeping. You do whatever you want. He's his own person. And he was playing video games that day. And now, now uh, this is from his recount. He gets up, shuts off the lights, gets ready to go to bed. And he hears like weird noises in her room. <laughs> like weird noises. He's like, what the fuck is that? So he goes into the room and um, opens the door and realizes he's like, <laughs> not breathing. So he picks her up, what's, what's happening, runs to, to runs to our room, wakes me up, Stir, something is wrong with Olympia. I said, what, what? And I looked at her, she's blue. And I, and you know, I was like, she's not breathing. She's not breathing, we're going to the ER right away. Now, PSA, if you have a loved one, a child or anybody who has, um, um, who has a medical situation that is severe, like not breathing, don't drive to the ER, call 911. Because they have the car, the ambulance has all the tools to resuscitate your loved ones. 
because we took the car. It's just a knee reaction, you know. I took the car and we just drove to the hospital, but the hospital is just 20 minutes away. Do you understand? And I'm like, oh my God, if something happens in the car, there's, not, there's nothing we can do. There's nothing we can do. She's going to probably commit that. And, you know, oxygen, don't play with that. Don't play with that because if you lose oxygen, you only have two minutes. Two minutes before brain, da brain damage occurs. Three minutes, brain damage is happening. Five minutes, yeah, 10 minutes, you're dead. You might as well be brain dead. You see how quick that is? And so I was like, Oh, crap. <laughs> crap. Crap. And so, as a some trainee that I've had working in the healthcare industry during my youth, I pick her up in my arms because her body, she was trying to breathe. So, everything about her was just convulsing and trying to get oxygen. There was some oxygen going in. So, you know what I did? So, uh, maybe, look, don't think too hard, I'll stare because I'm running out of time. I swathed her and I, don't do this. You understand? Like, call 911 who, if that happens to you. I just happened to do that because, because I had a situation. I, I put her up like that and I tilted her head back like this. But you don't want to do it too far back because then you can't breathe. So, the head has to be up and supported. And because she's using muscle contraction to breathe... You can't have the arms down here because, it, you know, it's more work. So you bring the arms in, keep the chest open, tilt the head back a little bit and to help her get some convulsion and air. Almost like cop. Anyway. And that's why I saved my kid's life because she was able to get some oxygen in until we got to the hospital. Forget the car seats. Forget the red lights. Oh, no, honey, we're burning all the lights. Yeah. Even then, we got there in 20 minutes. It's insane. <laughs> three minutes <laughs> no i'm not gonna make it <laughs> two minutes so um what was i saying anyway fast forward long story short when we got to the hospital we we have to go through all the paperwork are you have your mind i'm i come in with a limp baby okay almost tears in my eye but you know i have to focus i have to focus i have to pay attention i have a kid that replies on me so i walk into the er and this effort is like wear a mask i, I couldn't even understand really it's like wear a mask i'm like what 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 because my brain was like i need to get to the front desk and he's like wear a mask i said oh okay sorry put it up put it on there like a good 30 seconds my brain just was not focusing on anything but to get her in there i get there in the front desk and this other effort is like what's your name what's your number What's her age? What am What? And I'm like, are you freaking blind? That do I have to spell this to you in hieroglyphics? We must be out your effing mind. So I'm sitting there with the kid, and I tell her, "Listen, look, I have my husband coming back in the back. All right, she's not effing breathing. I know, I know, I know, but I had to sit there for a good two minutes dealing with this stupid idiot." So I grab, I grab the, the freaking sticker, wrap it around, and I'm looking at the thing is full. The ER thing is full. Okay. Listen, this is a problem here in, in, over there in America. Please, if you have, you have, you have an emergency in America, you might as well just die. You, you're probably going to end up dead. So I'm sitting there in the, in the triage, one nurse dragging her feet. Mm, uh, mm, next, like stupid, stupid, incompetent income poops. And I'm sitting there in the ER. And then I, I look over there in front, someone like, Oh, I have a headache. And listen, I had to take my two feet, walk in there. I said to the patient, I'm sorry. I'm sure you, your issue is, is big. And, you know, I look at the ear and I said, my daughter is not breathing. What, what kind of triage is this? That's not triage. What, kind, what is this? So, oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> look, <laughs> I'm composed until I'm not. And I have a temper. And so... I bring the daughter over. Yeah, yeah, she's not breathing. Talking like that. Talking like that. You know, and I'm sitting there, uh, you know, composing every bit of my, of my, of my, of my body not to, not to turn into an angry black man. Cause I was, I was about to be an angry black foreign man. <laughs> you know, long story short, they, they, they went in there and saw her and, and later to find out. And that's how we found out like there was an issue with her lungs and they had to pump it with steroids and so, 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 you know, and, uh, look, I'm out of time. I'm out of time. I have to go. It's 10. And I know she's there. I'm out of time before she texts me. What the hell are you? Anyway, I'll see you next time. Uh, it was really nice to have Chatty here with you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Please don't be mad at me for disappearing. I told you. When I quit this thing, I will tell you I quit. 
One thing about me, you don't have to guess. If it's if you don't hear it from me, it's not gonna happen. Do you understand? Because I have no problem telling you I quit. Please, what? I have no issues telling you I'm done. <laughs> so just don't be mad at me. And if you're mad, it's okay. It's okay. You can be mad at me. We're all human. We, you know, I give you the room to be mad, just like I have the room to be mad. But you know, a lot of stuff happened, and I know it's like, oh my god, another excuse with your kid. Yes, no excuse with my kid. Another one with my kid, and there will be plenty more. You don't mind? Yeah, she's young. She's growing. She's gonna have issues. Wait till we get to the teenage years, honey. Yeah, it's just the part of life. And I've grown a lot as a person. Look at me staying here, ten oh one. You must be out your mind. No, I have to go. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Like, subscribe. Bye.